The following real events took place at the linear systems exam. How did you do on the test? Uh, don't ask. Well, if the exam was a linear operator mapping into the set of household items, my score maps directly to the toilet. How about you, Dave? Uh, Dave? Huh? What? Oh, I hate math. Why do we need theory classes anyway? Oh, I felt like a first grader during that exam anyway. And I'm even more lost now. Eigen this, eigen that. What's an eigen anyway? I know, right? An SVD? What does it even stand for? So very difficult? Stupid factor something? You guys are impossible. It's actually pretty cool. What is an SVD? An SVD is a factorization of a matrix into a product of matrices. Let's look at interesting properties such as matrix sizes. It's interesting to note that A does not have to be square. Here, A is generalized as an n by n matrix. W is a square matrix equal to the number of rows of A. Sigma is the same size of A. And V is a square matrix equal to the number of columns of A. Now let's look into the matrix properties. The matrices W and V are orthogonal. This means that multiplying W by its adjoint, or W adjoint times W, will yield the identity matrix. The same holds for V. And for the singular values, one can quickly note that the matrix sigma is diagonal with extra rows or columns of zeros depending on the size of A. Also, the singular values are equal to the square root of the eigenvalues of either A adjoint A or A, ad A adjoint. Finally, the singular values can be ordered from greatest to least. Oh, I get it. Let me try an example. Here's a 2 by 3 A matrix. First step is to compute A adjoint A. Here we end up with a 3 by 3 matrix. Also note that A adjoint A is equal to V sigma squared V adjoint. This is due to the orthogonal property of W. Let's find the eigenvalues. This leads to the deterministic equation with the roots 56 for N0. Therefore, we can write sigma as such. Using the equation that you mentioned before, I can find the eigenvectors that are associated with V. Once we find them, we have to normalize so that they are orthonormal. To find W, note that W sigma is equal to AV. Since you know W has to be a 2 by 2 matrix, all we have to do is to normalize the first two vectors of AV. Confirm this by multiplying it out, and we get the same answer. What is all that good for in the real world? One possible application is image compression. For simplicity, let's start with the simple 5 by 5 grayscale image. Matrix A is a numerical representation of this image, where 0 is equal to black and 1 is equal to white. Applying singular value decomposition yields a sigma matrix, which looks like this. Notice that the singular values are in decreasing order along the diagonal of the matrix. To achieve the highest compression rate, we only consider the largest singular value and discard all the rest. This essentially reduces the size of sigma. Are you saying that in this case, since we only took one singular value, it reduces to a one-by-one one matrix? Yes, multiplying with the corresponding entries in the U and B matrices, we obtain an approximation of A, which we call A hat. So what does the picture look like then? Displaying the numerical values in grayscale gives this image. But wait a second, this doesn't look anything like the original. Yes, but look, we only kept one singular value to approximate the image. As we keep more, the image quality improves, but you would need to store more data. Here, we only need to store 11 values to approximate the original A, which has 25 elements. We can characterize the approximation error by looking at the mean error in pixel intensity over all pixels. So you're saying that as we increase the number of singular values, the error decreases at cost of increased storage footprint? In other words, this figure shows how much information I singular values will capture? Yep, you got it. This animation shows the improvement in quality as we increase the number of singular values used to approximate the original. Here's a more complicated example. This image is 800 by 488 pixels for a total of 390,400 pixels. You'll notice that the amount of information captured for this image increases quickly with the number of singular values used to approximate it. By the time we get to 50 singular values, there should be very little change from the original image. As you can see, 50 singular values gives a mean approximation error of only 2%, and we've effectively reduced the memory footprint of the image from 390,000 to 64,000. Here's the same animation we showed earlier for this more complicated image.